In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the One Signal plugin to create web push notifications for visitors to come to your website. Where, if they accept the web push, they can get notifications in their browsers when you post new content. Now, this is something that's been going on for a couple of years. You've probably seen it on the, on the internet before. The advantage is you have a 100% delivery rate. Whereas with an email, when you send an email with a new blog post, you may be filtered out by spam filters, you may be filtered into the promotions folder, you may be filtered wherever. <laughs> so you're not getting 100% delivery. Whereas with web notifications, you are at, at this point still getting 100% delivery to all the people who have allowed the notification. I'm going to show you how to set that up for free right now. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress, you like tips and tricks and getting better at it and serving your clients better, start now by clicking subscribe and then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And this video right here is part of a plugin playlist, the top plugins for 2018. Each plugin that I highlight in the top plugins has a complete walkthrough. It's linked to in the description down below the whole playlist. And I encourage you to check those out because those are powerful plugins. And I'm willing to bet you're probably going to use at least two or three of them if you're not using them already. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and check out this tutorial. To get one signal set up and start setting out web push notifications, all we have to do is go over to plugins and then add new. And then look up one signal. And this very first one up here is the one we want. If you search for it in two words, one space signal, you might not actually find it. So make sure you search for it as one word. There's 60,000 plus installs, 55 reviews at four and a half stars. So that's pretty good. Last update six days ago, compatible with the current version of WordPress. All that looks great. Even so, if you're installing a new plugin, you should probably back up your WordPress files in your WordPress database just in case, because you never know what could go wrong. It's always nice to have a backup. I'm on my test site, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'm going to click on install now and then activate. Now we have a new option at the very bottom of the left hand menu. It might not be the very bottom for you, but it is for me, called One Signal Push. Click on that to open the settings for the plugin. Up here it says your setup is not complete. We need the app ID and the REST API keys. We're going to get to that in just a minute, but we're going to go through this setup step by step. So, first we have to follow these steps down below to get web push on our blog. One, create a OneSignal account. We're gonna do that in just a second. Then we create the web push app in OneSignal, which is inside the account that we create in just a second. And then we set the web push app following the instructions in the web push editor. And that is everything. So I'm just gonna click on this. I'm gonna hold down Command, Control on Windows, click on it to open a new tab. I'm going to create a brand new account by clicking on web push here, get started. I'm going to create an account using my email. You can do it with GitHub, Google, or Facebook if you prefer those. I'm just going to use my email account and then click on the checkbox that I agree. Click on create account. Now we have to go to our email account and set up the confirmation email or click on the confirmation email. I'm going to log into my email right now. Here's the email with the confirmation button. Just click on this big pink or red button or pinkish red or reddish pink, not quite sure what color that was. But once you click on there, we're gonna have our account confirmed and we'll be logged into it immediately. We have a little tour we can go through if you want to. I encourage you to go through the tour. We're not going to, we're gonna just create a new app, which is step two in our process and carry on from there. So we've done step one, created the account. Step two, we create the app. So let's do that really quickly. Click on add a new app. App name, I'm gonna call it my website. Click on create. As you can see, you can use one signal for a lot of different services. I'm just using it for web push in this example. So we're gonna go with that Then click on next. We have three choices to choose from. The second one includes WordPress. So we're gonna choose the WordPress website. I'm gonna choose WordPress from here. Now here's the WordPress setup. We need the site name. I've been calling it WP Learning Lab, so we're gonna continue, but this should actually be WP PhD because it's on the demo site. The URL is WPPHD. You can add an icon if you want. I'm not going to do that in this case. My site is not fully HTTPS, and that is true. And that is everything I'm going to set in here. And then click on Save. So here we have our app ID and our API key. And it says up here, once installed, copy both of these keys into configuration, then account settings. So if we go back to our plugin, go to configuration, 
and under account settings, we put in the app ID and API key. I'm just gonna copy these over. Our one signal label is the same thing we set up earlier, which in my case is WP Learning Lab. Once you set this and your site goes live, don't change this because people on your list might get duplicate notifications like it says down here in the warning. So once you have a label, don't pick a different label. The Safari Web ID is used for Safari browsers. Notification settings. Use the post featured image for the notification icon. I turn that on because that's always nice having a featured image in there. Use the post featured image for Chrome's large notification image. I also have that on. And then we can choose to hide notifications after a few seconds. We do have a couple other options here. We have yes, yes on Mac OS X, no on other platforms, and no. So you can have the notification persist on the screen. It usually shows up in the top right up here. It usually comes a little pop in. I'm sure you've seen them before. Facebook has them, I believe. YouTube has them. If you're subscribed to my channel, which you should be, you probably see them when I publish new videos. The notification pops up. That's YouTube sending it. I'm just going to choose yes to hide on all of them. Notification title defaults to the name of the website, but here you can have something like a call to action, like check out my latest post, for example. And then it'll say check out my latest post with the information down below it. In this section, we can control how visitors are asked to subscribe for push notifications. Quite often when someone comes to your site, they have a little pop-in that comes down from usually from their address bar up at the top here that asks them if they want to be added to a push notification service. And then that's when they can either say yes or no. What I like to have it happen is have it go automatically. So they see the prompt when new visitors come to the site comes automatically. You can enable the subscription bell, which in this case allows them to subscribe and unsubscribe. And if I turn that off, I was hoping this would update up here, but it doesn't show the bell after users have subscribed. I like to keep it on there because then they can unsubscribe if they want to show first time visitors an unread message icon. Yes because that then shows them something that's already happened, which could be the previous message or the previous post that was sent out. Show one signal logo on the subscription bell. I usually turn that off. I usually leave on customize subscription bell text and I leave the other two off by default. For size, I usually choose medium, position. You can choose bottom right or bottom left. This is for the bell icon itself. So you can have small, medium, large for the bell icon. Theme, you can pick a color, red or white. Red stands out the most, it contrasts the most, it's more uh, drawing to the eyes so people look at it. So if you want people to subscribe and see it, red is the one you want to go with. First time visitors, by default it says click to subscribe to notifications. You can enter a different message here if you like. Tip, when unsubscribed, subscribe to notifications. So this is the tool tip if they unsubscribe. Tip when they are subscribed, you're subscribed to notifications. And if they're blocked, or not if they're blocked, they can choose to block notifications, which and then tells them they've blocked notifications. Message on subscribe, thanks for subscribing. Message on resubscribe, your subscribed notifications, or you could say, thank you for resubscribing. Message on unsubscribe, you won't receive further notifications. And you can read through these on your own. I don't have to read these out for you, but you can change these. These are all in input fields, so you can change this to whatever text you want. And these are examples of what's there by default so you know kind of what you're gonna write if you're gonna write custom ones. Here are the settings for the HTT pop-up. You can customize these, same as before, just add or change the input fields that you see here. Then we have welcome notification settings. By default, we can send users a welcome message. That's on by default. This will be your title, the website's title if you leave it blank, so I suggest you put something else in here, or doesn't matter, just put your website's title if that, if that works but this is just a welcome message. So it'll say your website's title, thank you for subscribing, and then a URL, which is usually your website's URL, or you could say something like, up in the title, thank you for subscribing. In the message, you could say, check out my latest post or check out this most popular post on my website and then have the URL to that post right here. That gets them reading your material right away. By default, this is turned on and this is sending notifications when you post through the WordPress editor. You can also send notific notifications when you post through third-party plugins. You may or may not be using that. I don't generally use that, but you can turn it on if you want. You can add Google UTM parameters. These appear in your Google Analytics and you structure them 
just like this. If you want to build your own Google UTM parameters, I believe I have a tutorial to that. If I do, it's in the card above. And just in case I don't, I'm just going to Google Google UTM. And in the campaign URL builder, what you can do is create the UTM parameters that will be used for your push notifications. So you wouldn't have to put it in the URL because one signal doesn't do that part. So you just take in the, the source, which in this case you would have as one signal. The campaign could be web push. Campaign name could be, I find some of these are usually duplicate in here. Web push again, term, new post, content, blog. And then down here, and by bog, I mean blog. And then down here, you'd copy all the UTM parts, not the actual URL, and just paste it right in here. Now you have your own custom UTM campaign tracking, and that goes into Google Analytics. Unfortunately, one signal doesn't have any variables you could put in here, so you couldn't enter the actual post title or post URL. That'd be really helpful if they had that, but they don't currently, or maybe they do in the pro version, or I just haven't seen it, I'm not sure, but it'd be pretty handy if they had that, but they don't. And also you don't have to have all these campaign parameters. As we can see here, we only have one that's required, well two really, the URL and the source. The URL will be sent out with the push notification so we don't edit that one. So all we need in here is just the campaign source if we want. The others will add more information, and the more the merrier in Google Analytics, so we can see what people are clicking on and what not. Then we can have push notifications for custom post types. We can set that down here. And these first two options use my own manifest JSON and disable one signal initialization. These you only use if something goes wrong. You'd end up using either your own manifest script or disable initialization if something is not working properly with the plugin. And this last one, I usually keep this on. It shows inside your one signal account how many messages have been sent out after you post a new post. After you've done all that, click on save at the bottom of the page. And now if I go to this website inside of incognito, we should be getting a one signal subscription, web push subscription notification. And here it is. We'd like to show you notifications of the latest news and updates. Either no thanks or allow. I'm gonna click on allow. And now we're on the list. And we also have the bell icon down below in the right. And that is it, that's how we add one signal and now we have web push notifications on our website for free so that's all there is to it i hope this video helps you if you haven't done so yet hit subscribe then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything check out the playlist of top plugins for 2018 in the description down below maybe the card up above too and next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better wordpress until next time keep crushing it and i will see you in the next video